Hi, I'm Simon from Bridicon, and we demonstrate what it's like to live aboard a yacht. This is my good friend Aaron from Clarity Marine. Um, do you want to introduce yourself, Aaron? Hi, I'm Aaron Downey with Clarity Marine Systems. I'm a marine electrician. And Aaron's here helping us to explain what it's like to deal with electrical stuff on your boat, like from batteries to problem solving. And today we are talking about this little gadget. And we're going to go through this uh, meter and find out what it does and how it can help you find problems and see where your issues are. Right, so I brought um, a couple of different multimeters to go over to introduce the very basic settings that everybody should know if you own a boat, if you live on a boat, and um, you have a multimeter. If you don't have a multimeter, you should have one. Mm -hmm. Or two. Yes, or three, or four. Um, so the reason I brought a couple is because um, they're, they can be different in how they're set up. The key things you want to know um, how to use on a voltmeter or a multimeter is the volts the ohms or impedance, and the amps section. So the reason I brought two is if you'll notice on this one, this is an older one, and um, you have various ranges for volts. So this is for measuring up to two volts. If you're measuring up to 20 volts, you wanna set it here. If you're measuring to 200 volts, you wanna set it there, and up to 1,000, okay? Now, you'll notice there's two different volt sections. This is probably the most um, confusing thing to folks on a, on a multimeter is you have a straight line with dashes that is DC voltage. Direct, because it's direct, so the line's going correct, directly direct to it. Current. Yeah. Um, and if you're measuring AC current, um, say from a shore power or yeah. from your inverter, um, you use the volts with a squiggly line. And yes. Sometimes there's a straight line with a squiggly line, like you can see on this one. There's a straight with a squiggly. So that's both, is it? Correct. The, well, this would be this. This um, is auto changing, so yes. it's kind of confusing. That's why I brought this one to show the difference. Um, you can see the difference here. So you have volts with a squiggly line, and yeah. you have volts with a straight line with dashes, yeah. okay. and again with the amps. So that's the two different designations for the different types of power you'll, you'll test. On here, there's AC and DC. So AC is alternating current, and DC is direct current. Correct. And on a boat what you will have, the DC will come from your batteries. And so anything that's on your panel, which is using the battery power, will be DC, correct? Correct. Okay, and then you've got your AC. Now that is the, for either 110 or 220, depending on what, where your boat right. comes from, where, how it's powered. So that's gonna come from your generator, it's gonna come from your um, shore power, and if you, um, switch on what's that thing called what's that big thing you switch on <laughs> and it that's it so or if you switch on the inverter which changes the battery power the direct current into into alternating current correct and but then it will drain your batteries really quite quickly won't it if you're using a lot of power if you yeah if you are using like a microwave or a hair dryer or yeah. a big washing machine that's AC. Yeah. Um, it has a lot of current draw. But yeah, if you, like on, on our boat, on Brinican, we we switch on the uh, inverter and it, you, we're using charging up like computers or iPads. It hardly draws anything. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's quite, they can be quite efficient. Yeah, they can. Um, this funny looking symbol here is for impedance or ohms. And this is for when you're testing for continuity in a wire. Yeah. So if you think you have a broken wire or a corroded wire along the way, um, you want to use the impedance section. And I'll give a demonstration of that yeah. in a minute. And then this is amps. Um, on a multimeter like this, um, you probably won't use amps very often. But on ones like this where it's a clamp meter, um, I'll demonstrate that in a minute. But this is for measuring current or amps. Yeah, so there's a difference between voltage measurement and current measurement or amps measurement, okay? Right. So the different settings are much clearer on this. The one that you have may be more similar yes, to this, is. where um, if you're doing a voltage measurement, you just put it on volts, and then you use this to select between, you see how this says DC? Yep. And if I select it, now it says AC. Okay. Okay, so it's the same as if you were to switch it from over here. 
Okay, mm -hmm. and it's the same on um, on um, um, some of the other settings as well. Mm. So you just you just select. Yeah. Okay, so yours might be more set up like this. Some of them are set up like this yeah. with a manual knob. Okay, so there's that funny symbol, the impedance symbol. Yeah. So if we put it on that, let's demonstrate that first. If you'll notice right now, it says OL or overload. Sometimes it'll just show dashes. Yeah. Um, if we put it on this one, let's see what it says. It just shows a one. And if we put on this one, it says o OL for overload, okay? Yeah. So the first thing to do is to make sure that your meter is working. And so if I connect these together, this should go to zero, showing that there's good continuity. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now then you would take this and you would connect it to one end of a wire and the other end of the wire. Or yeah. you can go, if you're testing a, uh, a fuse, yeah. like a glass fuse, yeah, or yeah. A, any type of fuse, mm -hmm. you can put it on either side of the fuse mm -hmm. to make sure that it's good. You can do it on a light bulb as well. Um, anything to make sure that there's continuity through it. And then, so if there is continuity and it is working, it would be like zero. It'll go to zero or close to zero. Yeah. Um, some things have natural resistance in them, mm -hmm. especially if you're testing, let's say, a 30 foot or 50 foot long shore power cable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a long wire. So it's, there will be resistance. There will be some resistance. So it might not go to zero, but it'll get close to zero. Okay. So let's test the continuity or the impedance um, function of a multimeter. Mm -hmm. um, so as we covered, this one has a whole section mm -hmm. um, depending on what you're testing. If it's if yours looks like this, just set it to the lowest setting. Okay? Yeah. This last this last little icon here, don't use that one. That's for um, diode testing. Just okay. forget about it. Um, um, but these are for your impedance testing. So if you're just ch testing a chunk of wire, um, a short chunk of wire use that setting. Yeah. On this one which is digital we're just gonna go to that setting and that's all you need to worry about because it auto ranges. Auto ranges. Okay. okay. So here's our wire. Let's see if there's a break along the way somewhere hidden inside here. So as we said first we check our own meter. Okay. We're at 0.3 ohms. 0.2 ohms. Ohms. So that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the impedance measurement. Um, voltage. Yeah. So you first want to select whether it's DC or AC. Yeah. And then if it's DC, there's only two wires, so red to red, mm -hmm. black to black. Yeah. Don't worry if you were to switch them, it's just going to show a negative. It'll show negative DC power. Okay. You see the negative sign before your number, like you see there? Mm -hmm. um, just switch them around and test again and the negative sign should go away. Okay. You'll see the same number, Okay. But, but the negative sign will come and go. It's always good um, to hit zero before you start. It helps calibrate it. So, um, and also when you're testing something, make sure that your finger doesn't accidentally touch your probe mm -hmm. because your body's conductive and, yep. and that'll throw off your measurement. To make sure so that this outlet here, which is a 220 outlet um, or 230, uh, has power. And so we're gonna turn our multimeter to the voltage setting. Um, now this is AC power. You can see this is DC. So I'll hit select and now it says AC. We went over different multimeters, have different ways to switch between the voltage settings. On this one you use the select button. And we should see something between 220 and 230. There we are at 228.5. Why would you test a plug? Just if your microwave isn't working, start to test here before you think there's something wrong with your microwave or before you're, there's something wrong with whatever you're plugging into it. Test to make sure there's power there first. If there's not power here, the next thing to do is to go to your breaker panel and make sure that you have this, the breaker that's feeding all of your receptacles. Make sure that's on or it's not tripped. Um, and if that's, if that's on and it looks like it's correct, just keep working up the chain back to the source of power until you find out why it's not working. Now, if everything is switched on like it should be, well then maybe there's a wiring issue, or there's a corrosion issue, or a broken wire or something along the way. But before you start tearing apart your cabinetry, before you throw out your microwave or whatever you have plugged in, make sure everything else is, uh, is correct along the way. If that didn't work, where would you go next? Or is that too... I just said I would go to your breaker first. What would you do at the breaker? I would make sure it's on. Yeah, I know, but let's say it's on. Um, then I would make sure that the inverter is on. And then um, if the inverter is on, 
and there's still not power here and check the output to the inverter if it's easily accessible and if there's power coming out of the inverter and all the switches are on in between so there's no power here well then now it's time to go one step deeper i would start at your at your ac panel and you can test on the supply side of the breaker so when your breaker is off you have the other side of the breaker shouldn't have any power on it Okay, and then you turn the breaker on and you should have power on that side of the breaker. If you do there, then the problem is in between that breaker and here. And if there's no other switches, if there's no other breakers in between that and here, then it's probably part of the wiring. Maybe there's a splice. Maybe there's wiring behind one of the outlets where the wiring comes here, and then it splices off and heads to another outlet. Sometimes that can go faulty as well. So we've covered volts yeah. for DC and AC. We've covered impedance yep. or ohms. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is amps. Mm -hmm. And so they're pretty similar between these two. So if we were gonna do DC amps, mm -hmm. we'll set this one. This one is auto, so we'd have to use select. This yeah. one says DC. We have that one on DC, okay? Yeah. So this is where these clamps come into play. So this is a standard clamp meter. Um, and if you wanted to see how many amps something was drawing, let's say on your on your boat, you wanted to, mm. to, to test, you could go and clamp your whole shore power cable here, yeah, yeah. and it'll show how many amps you're drawing. Okay. Or clamp it around the cable going to your microwave or anything. Mm -hmm. um, remember that would be AC power, so you need to make sure These you're over on, yeah. on on your on your AC setting. Mm -hmm. So now we're on AC, yeah. and then you test it. The same thing for DC though, if you wanted to test how much your, your refrigerator was really drawing. Yeah. Um, set it on DC, okay. clamp it, and mm -hmm. you can check. So, um, I wanted to find out what the refrigerator compressor was drawing on this boat. And so we're gonna go to one of the three settings we just learned about. We're gonna go to the amps setting. And if you recall, we explained on this one, you have to manually switch. So right now it's on DC, which is what we want. If we were testing AC, I'd hit select. So just make sure we're on DC. Now I found the, the two DC wires that are powering the fridge. It doesn't matter which conductor you test. You can test positive or negative. And you just simply clamp around it. And I can see we're drawing 4.29 amps, which is exactly what I would expect for this size compressor. And I'll show you, I'll clip around the positive as well. And it's a, it's a common, you'll see something a little bit different, but it should be very close. So now we're at 4.13, 4.2. Um, the reason I have, I have different ones, um, this one's a, a special meter. This one's extremely sensitive, and I use it for testing leakage current, DC leakage current okay. um, on boats. So if you have, it's part of a corrosion test. It's kind yeah. of getting deep and in the weeds, but um, this is a specialized meter. This is a kind of a rugged all-around one that I use so most days. So people that are just getting started, you recommend something like this? Something like this. I mean, this is kind of a, a, a middle of the line, kind of middle of the road one. There's fancy ones made, you know, made by high-end manufacturers. There's much cheaper ones. This is a low-end one. Yeah. Um, um, you can get very, very cheap um, analog ones as well that just have a meter. Yeah, yeah. Um, I recommend going to, to, to digital because yeah. that just allows you to do a few more tests. Yeah. Um, um, we could go into depth of more of the differences, but um, what we're covering here is just the basics of current measurement, impedance measurement, and voltage measurement. Um, the one other thing I wanted to mention is, is that all of these, if it's a digital meter, they'll all have um, low battery Hello. indicators. Mm -hmm. um, they won't just all of a sudden shut off, they'll start to alert you. Mm -hmm. um, I remember this one has a little battery indicator, this one has a flashing light. Um, once you start seeing that, replace the battery right away because different meters react differently to low battery. Yeah. And I know for example this one will shut off before it starts giving bad, bad measurements, um, as does this one. This one will start giving erroneous measurements before it finally shuts and off. And that's not good. And that's not good. No. Um, so there's a reason that this costs what it did. Yeah. And there's a reason that this one costs a bit more and why something like a fluke or a higher end will cost, you know, even more. Even that's more. one that's one example. Um, so if you see the low ba low battery, yep. change it. Okay. Do you have any questions about basic things you should know about your boat's electrical system? Do you know how to troubleshoot those systems? And are you curious as to when you should or should not call an expert? Get a copy of our free electrical systems audit 
for boaters so you can be proactive with your boat electrics which means less stress fewer costs and no nasty surprises follow the link located at the top right corner or you can find it below in the description i'm getting picked on here by the bloody right yank so. Do you want <laughs> I, was, I was expecting you to say something no wrong because they normally don't get it right the first time <laughs> I mean, seriously, do you guys know how to do it at all? Like, do you know, either no. of you know how to use that? I have no idea. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Why are they sticky? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's disgusting. So, so I'm just making the thing. What are you doing, So You look like a little kid. <laughs> if you're explaining it, okay. is that up or down? I... Am I okay like this on the, the camera? Look. No, your head is cut off. Because I'm, 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 I'm going to get on your same your level. Well, I'm driving for Richard Cutting. I just can't go up past here. Okay, I think that might work. Okay. Oh, Wait, it. button it. Okay. Isn't that going on? No, unbutton it. Unbutton it. <sighs> Before I sweat through my shirt. Okay. Okay, so Do you need to wipe your face off. I don't know. <laughs> There's paper towel right there. Tell you what was going to really make you swear. It's um, three minutes to happy hour. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! Uh, you just push it in, stick it in, and no, that's it. 